I'm feeling great. I am a married woman. Look at this ring. Look at my man. Hot damn woman. <laughs> mm, let me just mm, do a spin. Give me, give me one of those. Mm, mm. I don't know about this bag. <laughs> Oh, one of my favorite philosophers, Peter Rollins. You knew I had to bring him up. <laughs> he says we're all haunted houses full of ghosts. People that we've loved and lost, and people we've hurt and who have hurt us. Marriage brings out our ghosts. Marriage reveals traits in you that were there all along, but were hidden from everyone, including you. So it's because of these ghosts that I want to talk about for me in my 31 years, what has become the most important word, even more than love. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah. Forgiveness. He got it, by the way. Clark nailed it. <laughs> Forgiveness. Newsflash, you have and you will screw up. You have been and you will be broken. That's not a one-time thing. It happens over and over, and we learn and we grow from it. And because that will happen, you have to forgive. Again, that's the choice. Uh, a couple that had been married 60 years. I went to see them at a conference I was at. I said, you can have all the clinicians, all the people with letters after their name. I wanted to talk to this couple who'd been married 60 years. They said, if you want to change your relationship, if you want to revolutionize your marriage, they said, do two things. Do not criticize and thank each other often. Thank each other often and be specific. So thank her for the things that you love about her. Thank him. And when you do that, when you have a heart of thankfulness, you will automatically foster a heart of forgiveness. So finally, love yourself. You can't get, give what you don't have. So love yourself, forgive yourself. We all beat ourselves up. We live with so much guilt and shame. God loves you 
as you are, not as you should be, because you'll never be as you should be. And know that he, he created you, Clark. He created you, Sarah, and he said, it is good. He loves you inside and out, warts and all, right? So love yourself. That will help you forgive your partner, just as in Christ, God forgave us all. Dear Sarah, from the moment I met you on December 18th, 2017, I knew there was something intangibly special about you that I couldn't place my finger on. Lo and behold, just a week later, I fell in love with you while holding your hand and singing worship music at Watermark's Christmas Eve service with Lindsay right there next to us. God sure does have a funny sense of humor, doesn't he? When I was going into that season of life when we met, I prayed to be shown an unexplainable sign from the Lord that I was pursuing the right woman. Hang on one second. Okay. Soon after, I realized our birthdays are quite literally flipped, 7-9 and 9-7. For my logistical and analytical brain, God knew that that was exactly what he needed to show me. <laughs> you really are an answered prayer in my life. When I look at you, I see a beautiful, strong, creative, God-fearing woman. That is a dangerously good combination. <laughs> I see our late night sugar trips to the nearest gas station, Sunday home goods dates to upgrade our decor, playing with Hank and Ace until they're panting on the ground with their tongues out from exhaustion. But more than all of that, I can't wait to see our little furry boys play with our future Monday babies running around. The last three years have been the most gratifying, exciting, and difficult years for both of us for different reasons. I'm forever grateful to the lessons that we've learned and the hardships we've faced because we are now stronger together and rely on each other for strength and support more than ever. Mm. You're my person, Sarah, and I'm so thankful God brought us back together. I vow to always love you like God loves us to be your comfort when times are hard, and to be the reason that your sides hurt and that you're crying from laughing so hard. I vow to continually surprise you and keep telling everyone else in your life except you about it, because I love giving you a hard time and your reaction is always priceless. I vow to keep the Lord at the center of our marriage, to go to Him for answers and clarity first, and to praise and give thanks when we're blessed beyond belief. I vow to indulge with you in your guilty pleasure watching The Bachelor. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! With an attitude, with a great attitude. I'll be praying for you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to need it. I vow to always be a lighthearted dork with you, to not take life so seriously, mm. and to enjoy the simple moments in life together. I vow to honestly communicate with you, to hold you accountable to your goals, and to never sleep, go to sleep upset with each other. I'm so proud of the woman you are, and I'm so lucky that you're about to be my wife. This crazy year has been riddled with potholes and unexpected turns. Mm but I can't believe we're finally standing here. You're my future, my rock, my biggest motivator, and my best friend. I love you with every fiber in my being, Bo Bera, and I'm so glad I swiped right. <laughs> wow. Me too. <laughs> so I guess that's an I do. <laughs> okay, okay. I have to go after that. User interpretation. There you go, Sarah. Okay. That's beautiful, man. Thank you. Thank you. Clark, I wrote this letter to you on April 16th, 2018, the day I knew that I wanted to marry you. I have kept the letter all this time, and this is what the letter says. I've known for a while now that you're the man I want to marry. You have shown me in so many ways that you have every single quality and more that I've ever prayed and hoped for. I've been taken aback, shocked, and in awe watching the Lord answer one of my deepest de desires, to be a wife. I have prayed for you for so long, and now that I knew, know who you are, I will continue to pray for you every day. The way that you care for me and love me unconditionally shows me so much that you exhibit the love that Christ showed us by giving his love. You care for me, you pray with me, and you love me so patiently. Tonight, when I had a bad night, you wrapped me in your arms and you prayed over me. You encouraged me and you made me feel so loved, valued, and accepted. You made me feel a sense of peace, and you pointed me to the Father. You said, next time you feel this way, I want you to pray first, and then I want you to call me. Mm -hmm. I admired your wisdom and guidance and how you showed me the importance of putting God first. Future husband, I want you to know how thankful I am for your tender and gentle love for me, the way that you care and encourage me to pray and be in communion with our good Father. I love the way that you serve me and the way that you allow me to serve you. I'm so glad that I get to serve you and love you for the rest of our days. Love your future wife. 
I cannot imagine my life without you, and I'm so thankful for our story of second chances. None of it made sense then now, and I was angry. <laughs> um, but now I see exactly how God was preparing us to come back together better than before. Clark, I vow to love you every single day the way that Jesus loves us, to support your dreams, to pray with you, and to encourage you always. I vow to keep God in the center of our relationship and continue my walk with Him so that I can be the very best wife to you. I vow to grow with and for you, no matter what the seasons of life bring. I vow to watch sports with you, cheering for your favorite team, and pretend I actually understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I vow to cherish our differences and allow you to lead with your strengths and to respect your opinions always. Clark, I'm so excited to be your wife, to love you, to start a family with you, to be your best friend, and to cuddle you always. Sarah, I give you this ring. Sarah, I give you this ring. As a symbol and daily reminder. As a symbol and daily reminder. Of my unconditional love for you. My unconditional love for you. Clark, I give you this ring. Clark, I give you this ring. As a symbol and daily reminder. As a symbol and a daily reminder. Of my unconditional love for you. Of my unconditional love for you. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> we heard it. You guys both had beautiful vows. You said I do. So it's my honor and privilege for now to you, man and wife. Clark, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Clark Mundy. <laughs> hey, good. Good hand up. <laughs> Woo! Easy. Easy. <laughs> In the ground we bury the seeds of a pantry, all the things we carry. And moon, yeah, my name is not Sarah Rams, come out. It's Sarah Mundy, that's for sure. May I have this dance? Looking for something concrete You must have been born with two right feet Said one, two, one, two, always on beat I know you've been looking for something concrete You must have been born with two right feet You must have been born with two right feet Said I love you more than your mother More than you love yourself May I have this dance? 